so talk too much yourself. So we are teaming step by step, and um, as you may have heard, Mizuno is currently facing low brand awareness and consideration. In fact, only one in five of the running junkies have even tried their shoes on. Additionally, they are also struggling with shoe inertia, which is where many of the more experienced runners have long found the pair of shoes that works for them, and they are quite resistant to trying on a new pair. So our team did some research to find the best way to promote the Wave Rider 16 while still addressing these concerns. And these are a few of the things that we found. So concerning their target, the running junkies, we found that they are the most serious and dedicated of runners, and they skew 66% female with an average age of 32. And what's really unique about this group is they are inherently social beings. So they love seeking out community, whether that's online or whether that's in their actual local communities. So online, they like following bloggers, such as Pete Larson, author of Run Blogger, and they also get a lot of their information off of forums such as Runner's World. And as far as local community goes, our team actually had the privilege of interviewing Raleigh's very own Julie Shea, who, among her many other awards, actually placed first in the 5,000 meter in the 1980 Olympic trials. And so this is a picture that our team took during our time together last week. And one would think that someone who was so decorated and who was so experienced and awarded so many times in her running career would be very competitive and individualistic. But actually, when we got to talk with her, we realized that she really valued community and she emphasized that when she was younger, community was really what pushed her and motivated her to break past any self-set limitations and reach the next level of her running career. And so, yeah, and so actually she's also involved in giving back now. So in the Raleigh area, she volunteers and she takes it upon herself to kind of grow and to train young runners in that area as well. So as far as the running specialty stores go, we did some research, and we found that what they really need is for their vendors, like Mizuno, to provide complete solutions that make it really easy for their staff to engage with customers and also to sell products. And so here too, they emphasize the importance of community. And so for a lot of these specialty store owners, they really take the time to get to know local customers because for these specialty store owners, it's a means of survival against steep discounts offered online. So they really have a lot of promotional events races and educational events to really draw in the community and create that stable customer base. And so one store owner said, community programs build a relationship between the shopper and the store. And if it weren't for these local running races in our market, we might not exist. So what does this all lead to? If you guessed community, you guessed right. Um, our team has uncovered the insight that runners depend on their community to break past any barriers and to reach the next level of their running journey. And so Mizuno's opportunity here is to engage its customers and the specialty store partners through a comprehensive, interactive approach to community, both online and in store. And we feel that by investing just a little more time and effort into those local community events, Mizuno will really strengthen its standing and relationship with those two major groups. So how will this strategy guide our creative and ultimately lead to higher consideration in trials of Mizuno's in store? And again, it all starts with community. So for Mizuno, by creating this bolstered sense of community, it's actually creating for itself a platform that it can use to reach out and engage with its customers, to engage with the specialty store partners. And through that, awareness will naturally increase, as well as consideration. And actually, 80% of customers who walk into a store already have the brand in mind that they want to buy. And of that percentage, 90% of those people end up buying that brand. 
And so we feel that our approach with the community would be a very effective means of reaching out to these running junkies early on in the purchasing process and really influencing their purchasing behavior. So, the brilliant quest. I'm going to read you a little something to introduce our direction and get you guys on the right path. Every runner knows their journey, whether it's emotional, physical, or personal, with the goal of being the perfect run. The path is often long and tedious, but that's what makes it worth the effort. The pursuit of this goal is a brilliant quest. Just like the telling of an epic, the journey is not something that should be skipped over. The journey defines who you are. Every stride is a chapter in each runner's quest. Along the way, at nearly every twist and turn, doubt lies in wait. The obstacles you must overcome are often more defining than what awaits you at the end. Strength lies in the ability to push oneself mentally, emotionally, or physically, leaving obstacles behind. This push, this persistence, this is the quest. We want to keep it, we, we really like the aspect of the path. The path is where we're coming from with this direction. It, it, it says everything about a runner's journey. Some people have an emotional reason for their running. They want to clear their head. Some people have a personal goal. They want to run for a charity. But how do they go about doing that? They run. They're running on the path. And that is metaphysical in some ways, but it's also how this uh, quest happens in the real world. So our signage, we took into consideration what other people are doing. Nike, Asics, they're using this gritty, photorealistic sense of the world. But that's not what a run is. Physically, yes, but mentally, no. People don't think of it that way. Runner, running junkies, they don't, they don't process it that way. It's meaningful to them. The reason they go on the run at the end of the day, or at the beginning of the day, is to start the day right, or end the day right. It's not about getting dirty. It's about cleaning themselves. So what we've done is we've taken the Mezumashi symbol, and we've given it a horizon line. It's become a sun, and the path is what leads you to that brilliant run. This watercolor effect gives a sense of airiness. It allows you to see that a run isn't getting down in the dirt. It's elevating yourself above that. You're beating the dirt. You're the one excelling. So this is an example of the in-store promotional banners we use. Engineering brilliance. Leave yourself behind. A singular purpose. A brilliant run. This is all to promote the Wave Rider 16. Our favorite selling point would probably be on the leave yourself behind page. On average, you can leave behind 194 pounds over the course of a you can leave 194 pounds over the course of a mile over the leading competitors on your run. We got that number from Mizuno Math. The selling point of the Wave Rider 16 is that it's lighter than its competitors. It, on average, is about 1.5 ounces lighter, with the average being about 11.45 ounces. So, if you multiply this by the average number of steps in a mile, 2,000, you get the total amount of weight that you would be carrying over that mile. We subtracted the Wave Rider 16's amount from the average comparison shoe, and you get about 194 pounds left behind. Why this is important? People know about lighter shoes. It's giving them a point of reference. It's giving them the reason that they should buy this shoe, and not only is it a physical reason, but leaving yourself behind, it gives you that moment of zen. It's more emotional than just a number. So in-store. We want to keep our in-store presence consistent with what we have in the posters. We want it to be about a fantastical notion of running. So what we've done is we've created a Zen box that sits on a podium. This is what the Wave Rider 16 will sit in. Now, there's sand, there's a little rake that you can use, and all it's doing is reinforcing that message. It gives you, it gives the Wave Rider 16 more than just that number that we were talking about. It gives it that emotional value. So as you exit the store, enter the store, you'd also be standing on this. This is the doormat that we want to bring the stores with. The quest starts here. People should be thinking of the shoot not as a reason they'll run great. It's a way to improve their journey. And so as you exit the store, and that's how we're kind of walking through this, is that as you leave the store with these shoes, this is the way this creative lives in the world. The brilliant beginning. So people who buy 
the Wave Rider 16 in the first week will be invited on a run. It's exclusive, it's only for the people who have bought the shoe. And what it does is it emphasizes that sense of community, but it also brands it. It allows people to interact with the shoe and the common factor that they have, and it allows them to talk about it. More importantly, the reason this is fantastic is that it allows the store employees to learn about the shoe firsthand from the consumers who've already bought it. It allows them to talk about it, give reasons other consumers should buy it. It's a good way to promote that business-to-business -business world that's not in your face. It's subtle, it lives in the running community world, and it reinforces the runner's ideals. A brilliant dawn. What we want to do is a semi-regular event that separates ourselves from Brooks already reoccurring night runs, which happen about 6.30 to 9.30. And it's not really brilliant what they do. It's kind of just go out and run at night. We want to have a break of dawn run. We want people to wake up in the morning, the sun shining over the mountains, dew glistening in the trees. We want them to have that peaceful journey on their way to whatever goal they're training for, a marathon, or that charity run they're doing. We want them to be positively reinforced with our message. Brilliant here. Now, our message is all about kind of elevating yourself, making your run less about the physical, more about the metaphysical. So, when making swag, it's kind of hard to do that, but this is our attempt, and it will work. What we've done is we've made prayer beads, reflective prayer beads. It gives people a reason to wear them. They wear them on their run, it creates a safety factor, but also it allows them to wear it in the real world. It's not just another neon bracelet that stands out. It's subtle, it hits the point well that this person is a runner, and it gives them a talking point on their runs, in their running stores, and at local charity runs as well. We also have shirts. Now, they're basic, but they're illuminating. Wherever there is gray paint on the shirt, it's reflective material. So on the run, on the street, cars will light this up. During the night runs, it'll light up as well. Enlightenment in each step. It stands out. It's meant to reinforce the brilliant aspect of this community. We also have reflective shoelaces. It's something fun. It gives people a talking point in the running stores. And it's something people will want to put on their Wave Rider 16s as it fits the aesthetic. Um, so a really interesting thing about the Wave Rider 16 is that there's already all this social chatter about it online because the fact is the Wave Rider 14 kind of fell short of people's expectations. So they're already talking about the Wave Rider 16, and they're like, wow, the Wave Rider 16 is, is you know, the Wave Rider 13 coming back. And they're already really excited, and it's still three months out. So I think that that really gives us a great opportunity to capitalize on this digital uh, momentum that's already building up. And so to that end, we're going to reskin the Twitter and the Facebook pages. Um, and that way, when we start talking about the Wave Rider 16, on our social channels, people can see that there's something big happening and there's something really exciting that uh, Mizuno is thrilled about this new shoe. Um, and so Share the Quest is a mobile application that we've developed. And um, the thing about the fitness app space is it's already really crowded with a lot of apps that are there to track your specific running public. So there's Map My Run, Run Keeper, and Nike Plus. And those are all going to track your distance, your time, your pace, your heart rate, all these things. So we don't really want to compete in that space. There's really no reason to. Instead, what we want to do is build on this idea of community that we've been talking about. Um, and so Share the Quest is going to be an application that allows you to uh, hold yourselves accountable to your friends in these kind of micro-communities you're creating. Basically, um, and I'll give you an example of an application that you can use for. I actually I convinced a bunch of my friends to sign up for a run with me at the end of October. And I'm kind of worried that, you know, maybe they're too busy and maybe they're not going to train for it and, you know, maybe someone's going to back out at the end, something like that. Um, share the Quest is going to be something that will allow us to hold ourselves accountable to each other. So what you're going to do is when you sign up for a run with your friends, you're going to download this free application and um, log the specific distance of the run and the date of the run. So maybe it's a marathon that's 16 weeks out. Um, and so you're just going to say marathon, your date. And then it'll come pre-populated with a lot of training plans. So maybe, it'll be a, maybe you'll choose intermediate 16-week marathon plan. And that way it'll pre-populate with your plan already. And then every day when you log into this app, it'll show you what you're supposed to do that specific day. 
and it's going to be a really simple interface. So you can just touch and swipe to the right, and that'll indicate that you've met your goal for that day. You swipe up, that'll indicate that you've exceeded your goal for that day. Swipe down, and that indicates that maybe you've, you've fallen short that day. And it's going to mark that day with a specific color. And so those colors are going to be really basic visual cues that you learn when you go to the middle tab, which is going to be our quest. And that's going to show you all of your friends' running plans. And so you can toggle between your friends at the top of the screen. And each day will be marked by this color. And so you know if your friend has got all these days that are marked in red, then they've been ex exceeding their goals each day. And so they're really going to be ready for the run. Maybe you should step it up a little bit so that you can kind of be on their level. Or maybe they'll have, you know, a yellow each day and some orange. And so they're maybe falling a little bit short. And that's where you know that you need to kind of kick them into gear and hold them accountable. And so we'll have these functions called either remind a friend or train together. And with remind a friend, it'll send them a notification and you can customize it. And it'll say, hey man, looks like you're slacking in your training. Or, you know, get off the couch and go run. I know you're there. And that way, it's not just a piece of technology telling you that you're not using this app. It's an actual person behind this message. And it's a lot more powerful than just a technological notification. And then, you know, by holding each other accountable like that, you're going to be a lot more likely to, um, to feel responsible, to almost feel a sense of guilt that you have to go run. And by doing that, um, we think we're really going to help people meet that brilliance and exceed their goals and kind of really get where they want to be by the time the run comes so that they're, they're prepared and they're excited about it. And then our other big social execution is a brilliant quest. And the thing about doing digital and social with running is that runners are really very much in the physical world. So we want to have this be living in parallel, both in the virtual world, the social space, and the physical world. So a brilliant quest is a, a scavenger hunt, uh, kind of in a sense, that lives in a social space as well. Basically, um, we're going to inform people of the scavenger hunt via social media channels. Um, drive them to the stores the day of the launch of the Wave Rider 16, where they're going to see these physical locked boxes that are full of Mizuno prize gear. So there's going to be limited edition Wave Rider 16s, and there will be limited edition uh, Mizuno gear. And then we're going to have them go out on these runs throughout the community, um, throughout different, different running trails in the area, where they're going to find these Mizuno quest markers. And each quest marker will have a Mizuno logo as well as the clue to the next point on the scavenger hunt. And they're going to take a picture and Instagram it or tweet it. So they're going to take a picture. Oh. Okay. So you're going to take a picture and Instagram it or tweet it. Share this quest marker, share it over Instagram, share it over Twitter, um, and eventually at the end you'll end up winning these prizes in these different ways. So we'll go into it a little more specifically. Um, first, like I said, we're going to engage people via social media channels. Mizuno Twitter, Mizuno Facebook, uh, and also the specialty stores Twitter and Facebook pages. We're going to tell them, you know, share it. this brilliant quest is coming, you need to come to the store the day of the Wave Rider 16 launch. And in the store the day of the launch, we're already having these brilliant runs, these exclusive events, and we're also going to have these locked boxes. And they're going to be, so this, there's this visual, you know, prize right in front of your face that you can see that this is going to be attainable at some point in the future. But right now it's locked, and it's going to have these clues on it. And so um, it'll say, maybe it'll guide you with some specific clue to the Al Bueller trail around the Washington Duke. And so you'll know the next day you have to go to that point. You have to go on a run there. And those, that begins the quest marker part of the running quest. So each day, over, you know, maybe there's two a weekend for three weeks straight. And you're going to go to that trail, go on a run, find the quest marker, take a picture of it, Instagram it, tweet it, continue on your run. We're really not asking people to go above and beyond what they were already going to do because they're runners. So we're engaging them in a way that's really familiar to them. And we're also kind of helping them to find a new brilliance by taking them to these running paths that maybe they, they're not usually used to. Um, and it kind of helps them to reawaken their love for running. 
by sharing them socially, we're also engaging all their friends as well. We're kind of bringing all these other people into the quest. These people see the hashtag Brilliant Quest and at Mizuno Running. And they're like, what is this? And so they join in. You can join anywhere along the quest. Gets more people running. Gets more people familiar with Mizuno Brand. And at the end, the very last quest maker will actually have a physical key. And the person who finds the key will take that key in store. And they will be able to unlock the, um, the Mizuno prize and actually win that right there in the store, which is really kind of an exciting event. But also, all of the social shares that people have already been tweeting and Instagramming the entire time, each of those is going to be an entry to a limited edition uh, Mezumashi drawing. We're kind of having it live under the Mezumashi brand because it's something people already know and are excited about, and it's a, an existing infrastructure that we can use to give away free shoes. But this is just going to be a drawing among the people who have been on this quest already. And so, if you don't win, sorry, if you don't win the, uh, the in-store locked box of gear, you still have a chance to win limited edition way better 16s. We also anticipate because this is such an exciting quest, um, such an exciting contest, that people will continue to share it. Um, the stores can, can talk about it socially, the winners will talk about it socially, and the Instagram photos will continue to live on. And so even beyond the duration of this contest, um, it'll live on in a social space in a way that really continues to build hype for the brand. Like Lauren said, all the social and interactive aspects of our campaign really bring people together in this community. Whether their goal is training for a marathon, training for a half marathon, it gives them that common goal to come together, which is why that fits in with the quest. So, not only are these are we trying to sell these to regular bottom line consumers, but we're also selling these to in-store employees, because they're the ones who most consumers rely on for their information. So, for instance, with the Brilliant Run and other such events that we're holding, we want to have our run birds send these out to stores. They're e-flyers that they can put their own name on, full city running, and they can invite their mailing list to take part in our events. We also have lanyards that employees can wear. So, when they're selling shoes, this will be around their neck. It will spark a discussion and allow people to have a talking point or inquire about the shoe. On top of that will contain information on selling points for the shoe, the wave plate, why the 194 pounds is important, the Mizuno map. It gives them a reason to speak about the shoe. And these employees are the main reason most people base their shoe decisions on. They're the information providers. Whether you pronate or supernate, they're the ones who know what shoe is for you. What we also have is the bond for store managers. What these do is these provide information for the employees and the store managers on why the shoe is brilliant. What it also does is it gives them reasons to sell the shoe and how they can improve their sales on the shoe. Because what we're going to employ is an incentive program. This incentive for, for program will give employees a reason to promote the Wave Rider 16 and promote Mizuno, which only reinforces Mizuno in a positive light in their mind even further. How do you incentivize employees, salespeople? So, um, as some of you know, I am also working retail sales. And let me tell you, a place like Nordstrom has one way to do that. I don't really care. <laughs> There's only one way to do it. Numbers. Who, who's going to get the most sales? Give them the most cash. It's a direct relationship, right? Is that how you incentivize your team? Who's going who's gonna to get the most new business? Who is going to come up with the most ideas. Not the same things, actually, those two. Incentivizing an employee requires listening to the employee, understanding. Running specialty stores, people who go to them aren't going just to get shoes. They're going for an experience. This is relationship selling. And they look up to these employees very much, the salespeople. They ask for, what's your advice? And as of now, I've been to all the local ones. In direct quotes, when I asked them about brand, they said, I don't give a fuck. Direct quotes. They don't care. What do you do about that? How can you say, well, I'll give you a little bit of extra money if you sell our shoes? No. What our idea is, is all about word of mouth. It's very organic. And it is also digital, which is going to be your portal into the actual word of mouth. 
So you get word of fingers and then word of mouth. And that's it's powerful stuff. And the marketing landscape is taking this very seriously. So the Osaka Marathon is in Japan, and uh, Mizuno is one of its biggest sponsors. It's a beautiful, beautiful area. Uh, there's a great marathon, and our win is for you and three of your friends to go to Osaka for a week, all expenses paid. Enjoy everything. Again, the community comes into play. <laughs> How do you get it? We're not going to do it with sales. We're going to take a different approach. You don't, you don't have to sell the most Mizuno. Get the most people to join your quest. You, salesperson A, how many people do you have in your network on this quest? How many photos are people taking? Build your social network. This is a Mizuno social network. Is this dead? So I'm To hell with that, I don't care. <laughs> All right. So, again, your salesperson is going to be that engine for word of mouth. Now, I'm looking around here and I recognize almost every single face. I don't even see Mizuno in here. Turns out Mizuno isn't even taking on any new projects. So who are we talking to right now is McKinney. McKinney, we are pitching to you. We are not pitching to Mizuno. That is our strategy. This is a community. And um, in the spirit of talked about work, word of mouth is everything. And word of mouth, as the other team said, is, it's trust. How do, you, do you know what the percentage of Americans that trust advertisements? Do you, does anyone know? 14%. So if there are about 30 people in this room, that's about four people that would trust your ad. The majority don't. 90% of people trust recommendations from their friends and family. Huge discrepancy. And when you have trust, you'll make that purchase. Studies show it. So, this can play a really good part in making a case for McKinney that word of mouth advertising is the key. And how do you do it? Why does McKinney have talked about work? I truly believe it's those six words. Well, five right now that are on the wall. <laughs> six coming soon. Most importantly is number one, listen, 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 listen all you can. That's what the best salespeople listen. Understand, we're not in a solution sales world anymore. This is insight selling. You are making a relationship with them. And that is going to be your key. Listen. Listen to the world. And the solution will come to you like that. With our campaign, you're going to have a very powerful case to make. Thank you for your time. I can envision Oh, by that. the way, I won these on the Mesomotion project, so thank you all for really? coming up with an idea that got me a free card. Really, what? They are really comfortable. Uh, I can't trace what else you didn't want. Shut up. Yeah. Wow. It's awesome. I'm just jealous you want shoes. I know. <laughs> I, I, it still hasn't sunk. <laughs> Good job. Questions? We'll do a bow then. How about that? That works. Everybody? <laughs> You know, what I say, you don't, you've not been in advertising until you see the sun come up. So, um, interns are getting a, a good indoctrination, mm -hmm. right? They're getting a good start to it. So, um, so anyway, thank you guys very much. And, Wait, um, are you here all night? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Great job, you guys. Yeah, thank you. Incredible.